Hello students, our topic of discussion is related to X-ray spectroscopy. In food technology, investigation of food composition and characteristics is very important not only to find the suitability of use for a particular application in food industry but also to comply with the government regulations. Every food processing and production sector has therefore made it mandatory to conduct a quality management program throughout the development and production process. The analysis of both physical properties and chemical composition is carried out in order to find nutritive value, functional characteristics and acceptability of the food product. Several analytical techniques have been developed and endorsed by different non-profit scientific organizations for quantitative and qualitative determinations to identify the presence of any bioactive compound and a physical, biological or chemical hazard. Current discussion is related to one of such analytical techniques in detail that is X-ray spectroscopy including its principles in instrumentation and the applications in food industry and other sectors as well. X-rays are short wavelength electromagnetic radiations that can undergo various interactions with matter. Such interactions yield data which when appropriately analyzed can provide useful information on the materials irradiated. The discovery dates back to 1895 when Roengen, working in a dark German laboratory discovered X-rays accidentally while doing some basic research in physics using a cathode ray tube. He found the device he was using produced X-rays and by doing basic scientific research on it with no specific practical goal, William Roengen discovered one of the modern medicine's most useful diagnostic tool and won the first Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. X-rays exhibit several properties that make these radiations suitable for wide range of applications from medical science to industry. These include their non-charged behavior, the property of traveling in straight lines with the speed of light and a tendency to induce fluorescence in the materials like calcium tungstate and zinc sulfide. In addition, the specific properties of X-rays with respect to their application is their high penetration power which gives them an ability to penetrate the solid materials of considerable thickness and the property that these can expose photographic films. Now let's talk about the theory of production of X-rays. The process of production of X-rays can be understood with the help of an example. It's assumed that an electron traveling at a very high velocity strikes an atom. Since it has high energy, the electron can overcome the negative charge due to the electrons around the nucleus and penetrate into the inner levels of the atom. During this process, electron will lose some of its energy as it requires to do work to push through the negatively charged field. However, if the electron has sufficient energy so that it is not repelled, it may transfer a part of its remaining energy to an electron in the K shell around the nucleus causing it to be ejected. This creates a vacancy in a very low energy level that electrons from the other orbitals will try to fill. That is, after the removal 
of an inner electron by an energetic photon provided by a primary radiation source an electron from an outer shell drops into its place there are a limited number of ways in which the process can occur the main transitions being an l to k called k alpha transitions or m to k transition is called k alpha however since l shell electrons are most readily available they usually succeed in filling this vacancy when this l electron drops from its higher energy which is a less stable position to lower energy which is a more stable position it loses a large amount of energy similarly if the original electron entering penetrates the l shell the x rays produced will be called as l x rays and m to l transition is called l alpha while as n to l transition is called as l beta and so on furthermore since each element has different arrangement of electrons about its nucleus and thus with a different set of energies each element emits x rays that are characteristic to that particular element in terms of wavelength and energies x rays are however generated by the methods like bombarding metal target with a beam of high energy electrons exposing a substance to a primary beam of x rays to generate a secondary beam of x rays of lower energy whenever required using a radioactive source emitting x rays during its decay process or from synchrotron radiation source x ray radiations thus produced show different interactions with matter which include production of white radiations photoelectric effect absorption or attenuation white radiations are produced by the atom electron interactions which produce characteristic radiation when a high energy electron beam is incident upon a specimen the interaction with the sample leads to the emission of a broad wavelength band of radiation called continuum or white radiation this white radiation is produced due to the deceleration of the impinging high energy electrons by the atomic electrons of the elements making up the specimen however if a high energy particle such as an electron strikes a bound atomic electron and the energy of the particle is greater than the binding energy of atomic electron it's possible that the atomic electron will be ejected from its atomic position departing from the atom with a certain amount of kinetic energy where the excitation causing particles or x-ray photons the ejected electron is called a photoelectron and the interaction between primary x-ray photons and atomic electrons is called the photoelectric effect during the transit of x-rays through matter an attenuation of their intensity is observed due to their absorption by the matter the bear lambert law well known from optics is used to describe this absorption effect the intensity of x rays say i0 that enter into the sample will be exponentially damped to a certain amount after traveling through the sample now let us discuss the instrumentation of x rays the major parts of x ray instrumentation include an x ray source a sample holder an x ray monochromator and a detector a common x ray source generates x rays by bombarding 
a heavy metal target with the high energy electrons. The choice of heavy metal controls the range of energy of the emitted X-rays. For instance, a tungsten target produces higher energy X-rays than a silver target. In general, the higher the atomic number of the anode material, that's target metal, the more intense beam of radiation is produced by the two. Most of the energy that powers this bombarding process is lost as heat, which necessitates the cooling of target electrode. As already mentioned, the purpose of X-ray source is to supply X-ray radiation to the sample so that either X-ray absorption or fluorescence experiments can be carried out. Most commercially available spectrometers utilize a sealed X-ray tube as an excitation source. These tubes typically employ a heated tungsten filament as cathode that acts as a source of electrons. It contains a heavy block of copper to which the metal target to be bombarded is either plated or embedded. Target metals include tungsten, chromium, copper, molybdenum, rhodium, iron, cobalt, etc. These are adjusted in form of a layer of pure metal that acts as the anode. X-ray generation by this process is however an inefficient process in which much of the energy is wasted in the form of heat. Due to this, the cooling of an X-ray source becomes necessary. Modern equipments employ highly sensitive transducers in which no cooling is necessary. The second important part of the equipment is X-ray monochromators. The function of a monochromator is to produce a monochromatic beam of radiation. X-ray monochromators consist of a pair of collimators, one serving as slit and another as a dispersing agent. These collimators consist of a series of closely packed metal plates that absorb all the radiations except the parallel beams. X-ray monochromators are sometimes used in combination with X-ray filters, particularly in the applications where X-ray tubes with narrow wavelength range are required. These are obtained by the use of filters and monochromators. The third important part of X-ray equipment is X-ray detector. An X-ray detector is a transducer that converts X-ray photon energy into voltage pulses. These often employ photocathodes that convert flashes of light into electrical pulse that can be amplified and counted. Detectors historically have been based on silicon semiconductors in the form of lithium drifted silicon crystals or high purity silicon wafers. These work on the principle of photoionization in which the entering X-ray photon interacts with the active detector material producing number of electrons. The current produced by these electrons is converted to a voltage pulse by a capacitor and a resistor. In this way, each entering X-ray photon produces a digital voltage pulse. Furthermore, an ideal detector should possess three important qualities that is sensitivity, proportionality and linearity. In addition, different types of X-ray techniques 
have been developed which are based on the properties of X-rays like X-ray emission spectroscopy that's XES, auger emission spectroscopy that's AES, X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy that's XFS, electron spectroscopy that's ES, X-ray absorption that's XRA and X-ray diffraction spectroscopy that's XRD. Next let's discuss the application of X-rays in food industry. The ability of X-rays to traverse through matter gives them the tendency to reveal hidden contaminants or defects. This has led to their extensive use in manufacturing industries for quality control and inspection. The technique has been successfully employed for the inspection of food products to detect defects and contamination. Second, it has been used for luggage inspection of concealed foods. X-rays are used for the detection of food items concealed within a container, generally luggage. This application of the X-rays is particularly important and crucial to protect agricultural crops from invasion by foreign pests. Third, it finds application in packaged foods. X-ray inspection has traditionally been implemented to the greatest extent in the food packaging industry. Products that are packaged in bottles or cans are ideally suited for high-speed X-ray inspection. Such units routinely process and inspect more than 20 samples per second. The inspection using X-rays is highly suitable for such products as there is the possibility of contamination of the product by metals, plastics, glass, bone fragments, etc. in the processing plant environment. An advantage of X-ray analysis over the metal detector equipment is their ability to detect all kinds of contaminants. Fourth, it finds applications in poultry inspection. Poultry inspection is another segment of the food industry that employs X-ray inspection on a routine basis. The inclusion of greatest interest in this field is the detection of bone fragments in the product that are often left behind after the deboning process. X-ray systems have been also found effective for detection of heavier contaminants such as metal or rock detection, but the detection of the softer material is usually hampered in this process due to the irregular shape and non-uniform thickness of the product. Fifth, X-ray have been used in grain inspection, most of which has been devoted to the problem of insect infestation in wheat kernels. Although being very successfully used for this application, bulk grain is still not routinely inspected using X-ray. The reason for this is the inability of current high-speed X-ray systems to detect larvae at their earlier stages and the size of grain kernels that exceed the inspection speeds beyond the capability of even the fastest computers. Sixth, X-rays find the applications in fruit and vegetable industry, especially in the inspection of apples. X-ray imaging of apples has been used for the detection of 
codling moth damage, water core disease and core rot in apples. Detection of codling moth larvae in apples has been investigated using CT that is computer tomography film as well as line scan x-ray systems. Water core disease is a physiological disorder wherein fluid accumulates around the vascular bundles of the fruit leading initially to sweetening but eventually to core rot. Efforts to detect water core have also been reported using CT, film and line scan systems. Seventh is the important application pertaining to tree nuts. X-ray imaging has been used for inspection of pistachio nuts infested by the navel orange worm that's NOW. Similar technique is expected to be extrapolated to other products like almonds for the detection of navel orange worm and the burrowing activity of pecan weevil. In other food products, although limited research has been reported, yet CT imaging has been used to determine maturity in tomatoes, to monitor internal fruit changes in peach during ripening, to detect core breakdown in pears and woolly breakdown in nectarines. Other detection studies conducted using x-rays include inspection of seed weevil in mango, translucency in pineapple, hollow heart in potato, insect infestation in peas, and measure the microstructure of meat emulsions. In addition, the other applications of x-rays include the elemental analysis like the presence of tectinium in solutions. For medical applications, analysis of biological samples such as those provided by biopsy of human otta or tissue sections, tumor growth studies and studies involving atherosclerosis. Last but not least, X-rays are used for analysis of rock samples for detection of different elements, analyzing alloy composition, presence of lead and bromine in aviation fuels, calcium, barium and zinc in lubricating oils, iron, copper and zinc in rice samples and pigments in plant samples. This was all about X-ray spectroscopy including its principle, instrumentation and applications in different fields. I hope you understood well. Thank you very much.